Another week, another Platinum Trophy. This week we are returning to the Star Wars universe for the game Star Wars Jedi Survivor. There is a huge gap for myself from when I first started playing the game to when I actually got the Platinum, as two days after the game's launch I was in another country for the entire month. So. Yeah, just a little bit of a time gap there. Anyway, there was only really one type of grind in this game as well for a trophy, while the majority of the others you can get without really that much of a grind. But before we get into the trophies, pressing both like and subscribe is greatly appreciated, and don't forget to leave a comment as well letting me know which game you would like to see next. For Jedi Survivor in terms of trophies, we are looking at 54 in total, 44 of them will be bronze, 7 silver, 2 gold, and of course the platinum trophy itself. Being as I was leaving for a month, the first thing that I wanted to do was just work on the story and get that completed. Once I had done that, I would start working on anything else that didn't require a grind and would focus on that for when I got back. Also, this is a spoiler warning as well, there will be spoilers regarding the game's story in this video, so you have been warned. For the first trophy, I had to defeat an Inquisitor for the trophy Rooftop Duel. We then broke free from the grass of the Empire for the trophy Forsaw Guerrera. The next trophy I actually got was by accident. When using the force pull, certain enemies can actually resist this. However, after a while of resisting, they actually use the force pull as a way to attack you. And while they come in to attack, you need to parry this for the trophy riposte. Riposte? I don't know how to pronounce this word. It's a weird word. Uh, we then crash land on the planet of Kobo and after visiting the cantina it turns out that Grease is the owner. For talking with Grease we received the trophy, grab some seat. We then of course came across a bugling and an important question came to mind, can we pet it? Of course I try and it works which also gives us a trophy with the name of the question that I asked, can you pet the bugling? We finally make our way through the forest array and arrive somewhere that has a Bacta tank with somebody inside. This turns out to be a Jedi named Dagangera. Releasing him from the Bacta tank was also was a mistake as after informing us of what happened, he turned his kyber crystal red which obviously turns his lightsaber red meaning he has now gone to the dark side. After a fight and a short cutscene where Dagangera escapes, we receive the trophy, the past made present. After Dagon escapes, we decide it's best that we get the gang back together, and our first stop is to get the Night Sister Merin. After making our way through another planet defeating some stormtroopers, Merin makes an appearance and clears the rest of them for us. We then receive the trophy, Survivors, we adapt. This next trophy is a possible missable trophy, so I made sure to get it done straight away as I was unsure if there would be opportunities later on to do so. We need to direct our companion to assist in combat a total of 10 times. I believe this needs to be done for both Bode and Merin. I made sure to hand back and get them to assist as much as possible during their missions and the trophy You've Got a Friend eventually popped. After some more exploring we finally enter an area for the story and it turns out that the Cordova is actually alive. This is also where we find Seer as well. For meeting up with these two we receive the trophy Among the Masters. We next get a very simple combat trophy that you can get while casually playing the game. All we needed to do was defeat 50 enemies while they were under the effect of slow and by doing this we get the trophy Han Slolo. Then shortly after this we defeat a total of 20 enemies who are unaware of us for the trophy they never saw it coming. While we are making our way through the planet again, we find ourselves in of course another fight. This time we come across a character named Cage. They offer us a bounty where we need to go and defeat certain enemies. For obtaining our first bounty though we receive the trophy who gives a puck. We now also have a move called Jedi Confusion. This allows us to confuse an enemy to attack other enemies. For confusing an enemy to defeat another enemy at the same time, we received the trophy Mirror Match. This next trophy was also done by accident. I went into the customization options uh, of Cal and equip new things, for, and for equipping new cosmetics in each and every slot, I received the trophy Hey, Look at Us. And with the help of Merit, we take down this big boss creature to protect Pilgrim Sanctuary. For defeating the enemy and protecting the sanctuary, we received the trophy for the path. So this next trophy, I'm not sure I got it how it was intended to be got. You need to keep your feet off the ground and walls for a total of 60 seconds. Now I believe this can be done by either using a creature to fly with or even just hanging off a pole but for some unknown reason I got it as a cutscene was ending and I was pretty much on my feet for almost the entire time. 
Anyway, for staying up the ground of walls for 60 seconds, we receive the trophy, Skywalker. We once again come up against Dag and Gerda, and this time we have to rescue Bode from him. Dag and Gerda escapes what we received the trophy, out of Bedlam. After chasing down Dag and Gerda, we come up against him in battle yet again, but this time we manage to defeat him for good with the help of Bode. We then collect the Abyss Compass from him to receive the trophy Tanalor Bound. Change of scenery now and we end up playing as Seer for the first time in the game and unfortunately it will be the last. We are trying to rescue as many people as we can and of course we come up against Darth Vader. After a hard fought battle against Vader we unfortunately do not win this fight and this is where Seer falls. However, Seer does manage to defend the Archive and for this we receive the trophy, Tragedy. At this point as well we discover that Bode is actually working against us. Bode has been providing the enemy with information about us and after surviving the Nova Garden and getting back to the Mantis we receive the trophy, At the Precipice. Shortly after this we discover the route to Tanalor and we also get the trophy into the Abyss. After making our way to Tanalor, defeating Bode, we finally pay our respects to Sia. The story of the game has now been completed and for this we receive the trophy, a place you could call home. Now that the story is done, I tried to get as many trophies as I possibly could before I left for the month. However, I was set to leave 12 hours after the last trophy so I was pretty much running on fumes at this point. I managed to only get 6 trophies in total so let's just go through them. I discovered an area called Fokan Caverns, I believe that's how you pronounce it anyway. For exploring them I received the trophy It's a Trap. I then travelled 500 meters in total while riding creatures that I obtained for the trophy. Now this isn't pod racing. I went around and discovered all the Jedi chambers, collecting them as well. For doing this you get the trophy Star Tours. I then started to go through each area of the map on Kobo as there are a lot of things to get and I wanted to get a head start for when I got back. There was a ship that was stuck in tar pits and for lifting the ship out I received a trophy, there is no try. I went on over to Doma's shop, traded for a couple of items and it turns out I've traded 25 collected items. For this we received the trophy, greasy money. Then finally the last trophy before going away was an easy one. I can customize BD1, the blaster and Cal's lightsaber with new parts for the trophy kitted out. A month has now passed and I am back. Spending an entire month in a completely different country on the other side of the world is definitely an experience. Not using a proper desktop and not using the PS5 at all definitely felt weird to come back to but I am here and ready to get the rest of the trophies done. Within the first couple of hours we get a couple of trophies. First up is the trophy catch. All we had to do with this was to hit three enemies with a single roller mine. Next we push an enemy into the shattered moon mining cannon. At first I thought this was difficult but I realized I had actually read it wrong. For some reason I thought I had to use the mining cannon to push the enemies into the pit below but no. I just had to use force push on the enemy into the cannon. Thankfully I didn't waste too much time here and I got the trophy this is cannon. After upgrading some skills making my force stronger I lift enemies into the air and slam them into the ground. Turns out there was 5 enemies in there so I got the trophy slam dunk. At this point I was still getting used to using a controller again and decided that the best way to get used to use it again was to fight strong enemies and that is exactly what I did. There is something in the game called legendary adversaries, basically upgraded versions of some of the tougher bosses in the game. After going around and defeating them all I received the trophy, I'm a living legend. Using the force lift again, this time I was taking out enemies in a different way than slamming them. I changed stand to include the blaster and was attacking the lifted enemies while they were still in the air. For attacking 20 lifted enemies I received the trophy, get down from there. I wasn't finished using the blaster just yet because for the next trophy we had to defeat 10 enemies with shots using the point blank skill. This required us to perfectly parry using the blaster which was a little bit difficult. But after taking hit after hit I finally defeated the last enemy for the trophy so uncivilized. We are not done just yet however we still have another combat trophy to go. This time we had to avoid 50 attacks using focus sight and this was probably the easiest one out of the bunch. I went into the training area and just held down triangle to go into focus mode. Enemies would come towards me. 
try to attack me, but it would auto dodge, and then I just attack the enemy. 50 evades later, I finally achieved the trophy, one with the force. Now it's time to get some of the miscellaneous trophies done before working on the grind part of the game. First up, I just headed back to the cantina as I needed to clean something out. After using the fours, I got the trophy cleaning up. I next took my mount and dropped them into what can only be called as the great unknown. For doing this, I got the trophy. They're probably fine. I then went around and finished recruiting everybody to join the cantina. For having a packed cantina, I received the trophy max capacity. Now this next trophy was difficult enough though i could do it in the training mode we had to execute 10 perfectly timed precision releases now this took me about 30 minutes in total just for 10. thankfully though i saw a comment online of an easier way to do it while holding triangle when the enemy is about to attack double tap triangle and there's about a 50% chance you've done it right. Thankfully, this had only needed to be done 10 times and I got the trophy pinpoint. Next was to travel to an area of Kobo called Harvest Ridge. All I had to do here was reach the highest point. For doing this, you get the trophy King of the World. I next decided to finally take on all the bounties that I needed to do. Now it turns out that this trophy is actually bugged for a lot of people, but thankfully one of those people was not me. Before leaving for a month, I managed to casually do five of them as I was playing through, but there was still quite a few more to do. After going through all of them, it turns out that Cage sent us to defeat those bounty hunters as she wanted zero competition for when she takes me down as I have a sizable bounty on my head. While we are fighting, we are interrupted by yet another bounty hunter. Uh, this one is definitely a little well known within the Star Wars universe, that of course being Boba Fett. Thankfully though, Boba Fett isn't after us as the bounty that he's got is actually after Cage. After a standoff with the three of us, Cage is taken down and Boba Fett leaves us be. For this, we actually get two trophies. The first one is Intergalactic Geographics for scanning every type of enemy to fill out the tactical guide. And the second is Cage Match for gaining the attention of a mysterious stranger. After all of that combat, I decided to take a quick break to get an easier trophy. I realize I have enough skill points to unlock the last nodes within some of the skill trees. For fully upgrading three of the skill trees, I received the trophy, the Jedi Path. Next, I start working on the perks. I first needed to unlock all 10 perk slots. After about 45 minutes, I get the remaining ones that I need. I then go into my perks and equip the perks in all of the slots for the trophy perk of the job. Next, it was time for some more miscellaneous trophies. First up, all I needed to do was equip a mullet and then while rocking the mullet, I had to drop kick an enemy. For this, I got the trophy, Roadhouse. This next trophy was actually an easier one than the one before. I had to use BD1 to investigate a target in the distance, and for this, I got the trophy, Reconnaissance. Okay, maybe this one is easier than the last one. I just had to go into the customization part of Cal, equip the poncho, and for this, I just received the trophy, a present I've not felt since. Okay, no, this is definitely easier than the ones that I spoke about before. For this, all I had to do was equip a headband and then hit a training dummy once. And for that, I cut the trophy, Cobra Cow. What wasn't easy though is this next trophy. This next trophy is pretty much the only groin that I had to do in this game. We have to collect a total of 100 Priorite Shards. Some things were on my side though, first of all the majority of them are located on Kobo, out of the 100, 91 of them are on Kobo, 4 on Coruscant and 5 are on Nova Garan. I quickly collected those on Coruscant and Nova Garan first so I could focus my time on Kobo. Another thing that was on my side was the fact that I had already completed something which allowed me to see where all the collectibles are on the map. The only thing that was sort of against me with this is I couldn't tell whether it was a priorite shard or possibly a data disc. I then spend the next several hours on this. I think between my last trophy and this trophy, it was almost six hours. Granted, two of them, I was probably doing something else, but it did feel like a long time to get through. I was trying to avoid enemies at all costs so I could quickly get there and get it done. Eventually though, I finally got all but one of the Priorite Shards. The last one I needed to get was to play a match of Hollow Tactics. After defeating just one person in there for the reward of a shard, I quickly made my way to Doma, purchased the remaining items, and got the trophy Splurgle. Now that the main grind of the game was done, I could finally relax and just casually finish up the rest of the trophies. 
First up, I had to fill the aquarium in the cantina. For this, I went around the planets to find Scuba, watched him fish, and that was it. After doing it several more times, as I had already done half of it up to this point, I got the trophy, Scuba Diving. Next up was those hollow tactic matches. This was a little bit more difficult, but the more I played, the more I understood. Eventually, I defeated all of the opponents that they had to offer, and I got the trophy, Gambler. Next up was one that could possibly take a little bit of time. I had to find space for a full garden on top of the cantina. After going through all of the seeds that I had, unlocking all of the plots and then planting more seeds, I finally planted in all of the available plots for the trophy growth spur. We are now down to our final trophy and this could have potentially been an annoying one, but I actually found it pretty fun. The trophy is for force tiers. I only had about four left to do and they were all pretty simplistic ones. Once I figured them out, that is. Before that though, yeah, it was just a little bit annoying. But eventually I got it figured out on how to do it, got the last one done and cut the trophy blood, sweat and tears. And then of course, we get the platinum trophy itself, the Jedi Survivor. Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a fantastic game and definitely a great sequel to Fallen Order. Despite some performance issues while playing, I had a fantastic time and I will probably continue playing to truly 100% the game as well. If you enjoyed today's video, press both like and subscribe, it's greatly appreciated and don't forget to check out the end cards that are on screen now as well.